Hey guys, Nerd King 101 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Avengers Infinity War. Of course, this review will contain spoilers. So if you had not seen the movie, pause the video, go to your local theater and see the movie, and then come back and watch this video. Don't spoil this movie for yourself because it's really good. Now, on to the review. Beware of spoilers. Alright, I love this movie. This is my favorite MCU movie. You know what? No, this is my favorite superhero movie. I think this is by far the best movie in the MCU. By far. I think it surpasses Black Panther, Homecoming, Ragnarok, Guardian by miles. I'm going to start off with what I didn't enjoy first, because there isn't that much of it. First of all, I think it's a little long. I don't think it hurts the movie's narrative at all. I think the movie is actually paced really well. I'll get into the pacing later. I just feel it was a really long movie. And I feel like that did. There was a point toward the end where I had to use the bathroom. And I was kind of just like, can this movie start wrapping up? Like, I really like what I'm seeing, but this is really long. So it was a little long, but I don't blame the movie for that. They had a lot of ground to cover, and everything, all the content that I was witnessing was good. It was just a bit long for me. Now, my second complaint is actually, in my opinion, very valid. I feel like there were a couple parts, mostly in the Wakanda battle towards the end, where, but with Captain America and Black Panther and all of them, that the action was really fast and really hard to follow at times. The characters were moving really quickly, and I couldn't always tell what was going on, so that did bother me. I did not like that, and I think that is perfectly valid. But besides for those two things, this movie is perfect. I have absolutely no complaints. But things that amazed me most, because my biggest fear was that they were going to have too much to cover. Because how is Thanos supposed to go from having two Infinity Stones to having all six of them by the end of the movie? Well, they do it, and it is paced amazingly. This could easily have turned to hell if this had been poorly paced, but it was paced so delicately and done so well that I never felt like we were rushing through the content, but it also happened quick enough that the movie didn't drag on. I really liked that. I also just want to take a minute to talk about Thanos as a villain. I absolutely adore Thanos. He may. I don't want to say for sure because I want to see how he is handled in the next movie before I say this because his plot line isn't wrapped up. But he is a contender to replace Killmonger for my favorite MCU villain. And Killmonger is an amazing villain, but Thanos is... When we get his backstory with Gamora, and he's giving her the knife, and they're just talking, and he's being all kind to her, and like, almost fatherly to her, as his men slaughter an entire planet and commit genocide, it is the most chilling sequence I have seen in the MCU. It is chilling, there's something about it that makes you uncomfortable. But what's great about it is that Thanos isn't a bad guy in this. He is, but he's not like the bad guy in the sense. He's like, oh, I'm evil. I want to destroy the universe. In his eyes, a lot of it is about balance. Because his whole backstory is that his planet was overpopulated. He was like, why don't we commit genocide and kill half of these people? And that will solve the population problem. Of course, the people on the planet said you're insane. And then his entire race died out. That's his motivation. Which I think is a lot better than the comic book motivation. Because I feel like the comic book motivation, while interesting, is kind of cliche. He just wants to get a girl. And it also, I feel, wouldn't please a general movie-going audience to introduce a concept like Thanos trying to make the female embodiment of death fall in love with him. It's kind of a stupid concept. And I don't think it should have any place in a movie of this level with the amount of build-up this has. I just don't think it would have a place in this movie. So that's my stance on Thanos. I think he was great in all of his action scenes. 
there were a couple fake outs where he got injured, like when Gamora stabbed him, and I was like, don't make Thanos look weak. Don't make Thanos look weak. But it was always him manipulating reality with the reality stone, so that was okay. I was worried at the moment, but of course, they made up for it by having it be an illusion, and Thanos was like, no, I'm good. I'm more powerful than all of you. There was never a point where I thought they were actually going to win. The entire movie, I was asking myself, how were they going to win? And that leads to the ending, which I will talk about later. But I absolutely adored Thanos as a character. I have no complaints about him. Um, another big praise I have to give this movie is that they handled all the characters really, really well. One of my biggest fears to going into this movie was that they would have too many characters to juggle and they wouldn't be able to handle it and they handled it amazingly. Yes, some characters didn't get a lot of screen time like Black Widow, but that I was fine with that because the problem with Black Widow has always been you get the feeling she's there just to have a female lead. And I'm not necessarily going to disagree with that. Because they could have gone with many other characters, but they didn't. Because Marvel's issue is there aren't a lot of female Marvel superheroes that aren't crazy out there that they could have used. That they felt comfortable putting in the Avengers movies so early on. Now, of course, they're getting more into more out there crazy comic book stuff and are more comfortable doing things like Alien Girl Gamora, who we'll talk about Gamora's death later, and of course Captain Marvel. They're more comfortable doing those characters now, but they weren't comfortable doing those things before. So Black Widow was just kind of there. She didn't have a role in the movie, and that did kind of bother me. The rest of the Avengers all had slightly big roles, but Black Widow was just there, but whatever. Um... I didn't like that we didn't get much of a Hulk. He shows up in the beginning, he gets to, to fight Thanos in probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And they beautifully choreographed this fight between the Hulk and Thanos. It's amazingly choreographed, it looks good, it's a great movie opener. It is great, amazing content. I also want to talk about the opening of the movie. The opening is great, they start off by killing some uh, guardians. They start off straight away. This movie is much darker. They start off straight away introducing the concept that this is a dark movie. I actually felt it may have pushed the PG-13 rating at a couple times. Like there were a couple times that they could have made it really violent and they had to censor it. People would get stabbed through the chest and there wouldn't be a ton of blood gushing everywhere even though the blood should have been everywhere. But they didn't do it. They were obviously restricted to a PG-13 rating. So that was meh. That kind of bothered me a little bit. But that was more just me and my issue with censorship in media. Than a problem with the actual movie. Um, Gamora. The stuff with Gamora and Thanos were great. I love how because they got rid of death. They took Thanos' humanity. Like the love he had for somebody. And placed it on Gamora. When Thanos said he loves Gamora, he means he loves Gamora. He does care about her. And I love that. And I absolutely loved how they had her him sacrifice Gamora in order to get the Soul Gem. That was great. That was really good. I was freaking out in theater when it happened. I was mind blown. All of the characters that die in this are the characters you wouldn't expect to die. The original mindset was, of course, they're going to kill all the Avengers. All the original Avengers. The guys that they have contracts that are running out. Obviously, they're going to kill those guys. They've been in the movie for 10 years. No. That's not what they do. They kill Black Panther. They kill Spider-Man. They kill Doctor Strange. They kill the Guardians. All the characters that they have been building up since the first Avengers movie, die. And speaking of all the characters they've been building up, another minor gripe with it. Uh, no Ant-Man and no Hawkeye. That bothered me a little bit. Because they didn't need to do anything of significance. It just would have been kind of cool to have them be there. I don't really see why they weren't there. The entire universe was in danger and they're pretty tough. 
There's some throwaway line, like, after Civil War, they booked it. Like, they wanted nothing to do with it all anymore, or something like that. I don't even remember the exact line, but it was still kind of frustrating, because you have all these other characters, and you're just like, could you just not get the actors? Was that the deal, and you couldn't handle all the actors? I don't know. That kind of bothered me. It literally had two more characters, and you would have had everybody. Red Skull. Red Skull returns in this movie. That, that was probably the only part of the movie that, like, legitimately, in the theater, I jumped out of my seat. I, I will openly admit, I got out of my seat, I was like, That's Red Skull. That was great. That was one of the most shocking things. I never thought we would see the Red Skull again. That was great. I loved how he wasn't a villain. He was just a guy that was there. I don't remember if it was the same actor. It had been forever since I saw Captain America, the first Avenger. I think the actor said he wanted no part of the role anymore. So I'm kind of leaning towards they had somebody else play him. I couldn't remember enough of the original actor or his performance to play to do with the same guy. But I love that. Speaking of the acting, all the acting in this movie was on point. There was not a single time where I didn't believe it. Once again, Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man. Robert Downey Jr. came through as Iron Man. He was great. Um, Thor. Thor is the MVP of this movie, which is surprising to me. Because besides for Thor Ragnarok, Thor had been the most poorly received Avenger out of the main ones. Of course, Hawkeye and Black Widow are meh. But out of, like, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, and Thor, he had been the most poorly received in his individual movie. Besides, maybe Hulk. The point, though, is that I was kind of surprised with how important Thor was in this. He, of course, gets the battle axe. I don't know what that's from. My small amount of comic book knowledge is failing me, but instead of getting a hammer, he gets the battle axe, and he like takes out a hundred enemies with it, and he nearly kills Thanos, and it's so good. One thing I didn't love, I'm noticing I have a couple more problems as I think about it while I review this, but I didn't love all the fake outs. There were a couple times where Thanos almost died, but he altered reality. And they were great! What the hell just happened moment. But after you got over those moments, you were kind of like, Okay, well that was a pointless thing now. I understand what they were going for to add in the sense of despair for the characters. But you could have at least had him alter reality differently. All he really did was turn the weapon that he was getting attacked with into bubbles. And I wish you could have been more creative with it, but that's just me. Once again, I think Thanos is a character mixed up for it. Also, they don't do that stupid voice echo edit that they have been doing with him for the past couple of years. He talks like a normal person, which is great. Because let's be honest, I don't think anybody was a fan of the echo effect on his voice. It didn't sound good, it was clearly done in post-production, and it wasn't good. This is just straight up voice acting, and it's great. Um, I also want to say the CGI on Thanos, or Thanos, is great. I was a little concerned going into this, because the main villain is basically entirely CGI, and he would look out of place. Never. He looks like 100% real. There is never a point where I was concerned about that in the film. Like, two minutes into the movie, I knew we were going to be fine. One of the things this movie does amazingly is introducing the tone. As I stated earlier, it starts off dark, depressing, they kill Loki, and that got me. Loki is one of my favorite character in the MCU. I really like seeing him and Thor interact. I think they have a great dynamic. So that really killed me. That really got to me. I didn't feel much when I think his name is Handolf, when Handolf died. I just didn't feel much because I was never the biggest fan of the Thor movies. Like, I was a fan of the Thor movies. I liked them. But I've never been a fan of the Thor mythos to the degree where I really care about the characters. Um... So that was, you know, a mess thing for me. 
Like it was a great, it was greatly shot, greatly directed, and a great scene. I just didn't feel much when he killed him. I felt more sad for Thor. Uh, also, the humor in this movie, I don't really think I need to say it, this is the MCU. The humor was on point. I laughed out loud quite a few times. As we all expected, Star-Lord and Tony Stark in the same room was great. All the chemistry between the actors was clear as day. It was hilarious. Probably my favorite group in the movie, comedy-wise, was Spider-Man, Star-Lord, and Tony Stark. Because you have Spider-Man and Star-Lord making all these old movie references, and you have Tony Stark just being like, Stop it! Stop making movie references! The universe is going to die! Then they have pop culture disagreements, which were great. Overall, it is a really good movie. But the thing I took away the most from it was the ending where they kill almost all the superheroes besides the original Avenger. I would have to go back and read like a list because I couldn't keep track of who was dying. But I think the one that hit me the most was Peter Parker or Spider-Man played by Tom Holland as I stated earlier. I mean, it was just great. The way he wrapped his arms around the Iron Man and was like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die like a little, like a scared little kid. And just faded away. Was, that was a beautiful thing. That was amazingly directed, amazingly acted. That was just really good. And I have absolutely no complaint. Now, I want to talk about what the Russo brothers did. They came in when they were put in charge of directing this movie, and they said, no. You know how we told you this is a two-parter? We're doing it in one movie now. And then they made it a two-parter. That was genius. I expected everything to be wrapped up by the end of this movie. And it wasn't. And that was great. I have zero complaints about that. I am so excited to see Avengers 4 next year and see how this all wraps up. Now, I need to say this. I'm going to withhold my judgment on Thanos as a villain and whether or not he is my favorite until I see how he is handled in Avengers 4 because his storyline is not done yet. But overall, as a self-contained movie, this movie is a 10 out of 10. I think this is the best MCU movie, however you do need to see the other MCU movies to truly appreciate how good it is, which some might consider a flaw. But I really don't. I feel like at this point, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a cinematic universe. If you want to follow the complete story, follow all the movies, and if you don't do that, that's on you. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this movie is 10 out of 10. I think it's great. I have... Like, two problems with it. The great, it's the, the, the best movie in the MCU. But tell me what you thought of the movie in the comments section down below. I look forward to discussing this amazing film with all of you in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this. I have a course poster review to all the Marvel movies. And I plan on doing some sort of discussion video for Avengers 4 down the line. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. And all else, guys, have a great day.